Spotlight. Trenton here with Sound Lake TV with Trenton of Fans Like Houses. Trenton, so Trenton. double Trenton action Trenton today. Squid. Yeah, there you go. Except you're from Australia. I'm from I'm America. Very much. So we, oh, I went hold it against you. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, you guys are playing these festivals and stuff. We uh, caught yep. you guys last week uh, during a rainstorm. It was when that last started, and yep. today it's raining a little bit. You already played. So I guess what, from this uh, festival experience, what's your overall takeaway from it? Um, it's been fantastic. I mean, for us, we're still kind of finding our feet outside of the world we were kind of existing in prior to this. You know, prior to the last kind of tour by eighteen months. Um, you know. We've been doing this for 10 years now and played uh, three warp tours in 13, 15, 17 and kind of, I guess, learned our craft live in that world. And I think now that uh, now that we're kind of seeing, like we're still doing the same thing, it's still us, but um, just kind of putting it out to a new audience, it's been really encouraging to see not just the number of people turning up for our sets, like especially today we played one of the side stages, so it was away from the main festival, yeah. but had a really, really cool crowd and it's been really encouraging for okay. just to kind of see you know, where we're at, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That, um, um, I, I talked to one of the other guys last week and stuff. That interview may or may not came out because we had some technical difficulties. But one thing we talked about was a uh, new record, Anon, that came out yep. last year. It's sort of a musical departure from what you guys do. Yep. Uh, how I described it to him was it is probably the most non-heavy, but most heavy at the same time. You're screaming a lot more on it, in a way, more than from, from what yeah. I've heard. So, like, I guess the creative process vocally yeah. and stuff, like, what, what went into this record to get this, uh, I guess, different sound and everything? I mean... <laughs> I guess on one hand, like my opinion is that, that I don't feel like that this album is more different to Dissonance than Dissonance was to Unimagine okay. and Unimagine was to Ground Dweller. I mean, you know, obviously that's all subjective, but yeah. um, for me, I think we've always just tried to push our boundaries with every record, regardless of what the last one was. And, you know, obviously try to do that in a way that it's not a massive departure so people can't get into it. You know, there's always people kind of holding on to a couple of records ago, so yeah. like if you skip from record two to record four, then it is a big jump. But um, I think for us, you know, for me personally, it was just about just exploring different styles of vocals, like thinking in a live context, you know, how can I make this easier for myself to pull off, you know, 30 consecutive shows, yeah. you know. Um, and so I guess trying not to be belting it out of top range all the time. Yeah. And I think it, it allowed a lot more room for expression and dynamics um, rather than just going from low to high to low to high every song. Like it just, you know, it meant that I could kind of have different songs in different ranges that just meant that I could kind of explore the different kind of feeling yeah. behind each song. And we, I guess we explored different stories as well, like rather than kind of, I guess, you know, the world from our perspective, it was more kind of trying to tell stories and put myself in other people's shoes and, you know, I guess lending my emotional weight and my lyrics to their story. And okay. kind of, you know, some, some of it was personal, some of it was not, but I try not to really specify which is which just purely because that doesn't really matter. It's what people yeah. listening to it take out of it that's more important for us. Okay, awesome. Yeah, um, I guess I guess something else with it sonically is it seems like Early on, you guys had all these layers and ambience in your music, you know, all yep. these pretty, you know, parts, but this one seems more of a grungy, raw feel music. I guess that's where we, I'm coming yeah, from. We definitely, it. I mean, there's yeah. certainly a lot of depth in there, and a lot of it's mixed kind of low, so that it's like, it's hard to single out those sounds, yeah. but there is a lot of keys and production yeah. stuff in underneath everything. But we did want to go for that more raw, like, rock record where it really just, everything had its place. And, you know, we even with this, you know, the signal chains and stuff in the studio, everything was set up to be as, like, natural and organic. Yeah. Um, as opposed to a previously, everything was very tight, very controlled. Yeah. Very, I wouldn't say digital, because we did certainly use analog stuff, but it was, like, a very tight clinical sort of sound yeah. whereas this time around we really try to just open it up more and um, and that meant simplifying some parts to be able to let the tone sing rather than yeah. the parts um, but I, yeah I think that was probably the main significant difference in the musical yeah. process I think for me musically it puts you in a position where you could tour with a band sort of like the Black Keys for example as well as maybe like Beartooth you know what I mean yeah. you guys can like blur both those worlds with this record yeah. and so I don't think you guys really have that before to where like you can sure. access this whole other level of fans and so I guess with this record have you seen any growth from the band from the number of people that are listening Definitely. because, because yeah. it's a, it is, it is, it is yeah. more of a raw rock it's, record. Like I said, it's a little bit hard to tell because we are still kind of finding our feet outside of the warp world, yeah. but um, especially here in the US. Like That's a good way to put it, out of the warp yeah. world, yeah. yeah. I mean, Australia has been blown up for us in yeah. the last two or three years and um, just keep doing bigger and bigger shows. We just did like a round of like 1,500 cap, okay. 1,800 yeah. cap rooms on our last headliner and they were all like packed. So it was really, really cool tour. Um, and you know, Eastern Europe, sorry, not Eastern Europe, like just mainland Europe's been doing really well for us as well. So it's, you know, I guess in the States, like I said, we're just still kind of feeling out where it goes. But in terms of like the response to the songs, especially in the live context, we've been on tour for a few weeks and we did a headliner run late last year mm -hmm. in support of the album. 
and um, yeah, just the energy and enthusiasm was there regardless of what song from what record it was. Yeah. And so I think you know, live is where it all makes sense, and I think that that's where I guess the most dedicated fans have come out to be a part yeah. of it. So. so what's the experience like, I guess, having some of the songs on Octane or, or on the radio? It's like, been awesome. Yeah. yeah, really cool just to see how that's connecting because it is, again, it's a totally yeah. different audience. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. Um, they've been really supportive of us and we're really stoked to have the opportunity to have been, you know, pumped through it. You okay. know, all the various songs. Monster got a great run. I'm um, sick, you know, sick. A little, little bit of a slower burn, but it's sat in the, you know, uh, Rock 40 for the last couple of weeks. So yeah, really nice. stoked to have it up there. Nice. So, um, yeah, so you got anything else coming up for the summer and to the fall you can talk about? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're uh, not so much the fall. Um, we finished this ride and we've got like a festival in Australia with a couple of routing shows to that. And then uh, we've got a few weeks off and then we're in UK and Europe for a couple of festivals as well and some of the shows linking that up as well with our last night. Um, and then pretty much just taking the rest of the year kind of a little bit easy. Like we'll, we might be doing some Australian stuff at the end of the year, but okay. just trying to get back into the writing process, get a few songs together and kind of see where we're at for right. next year. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we're all trying to be functioning adults yeah. these days. So I think yeah. just trying to make sure that we're looking after ourselves and not just being on the road all the time because it's not the healthiest of environments to be in constantly. So just giving us a chance to kind of kick back and, you know, go, I guess, full throttle into whatever we're doing yeah. next. Now, now, you guys come to America quite a few times at this point. Yeah. So, I mean, like, is it still exhausting flying from Australia to here? Or? Totally, totally. Yeah. I mean, we've tried to make sure that the opportunities are worth it. I mean, this yeah. tour, you know, we got off at the festivals for this and then joined up with the Beartooth tour around it yeah. because it made sense as a thing and you know we take each opportunity at face value I mean we get plenty of offers all the time for yeah. different tours and some of them are great some of them are like eh. but you know the, more or less we're just trying to make sure that everything makes sense in not just the short term context but also the long game of you know making sure that we're happy and healthy and okay. um, you know getting that time at home to be you know to be husbands to be partners to be dads to be everything we are outside yeah. of tour okay awesome well I'm Trent with Sally TV hang out with Trent from Hayes like Houses here at Epicenter thanks for watching everybody cheers